Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's a great day to worship the Lord. Yes? Yes. Absolutely. Because we know that Christ is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. It is so wonderful to have all of you here today to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And to all our visitors and to all those who have come back after being away, welcome. It is good to have you here. Now we're going to do something a little bit different this morning. We're going to have the children's sermon right now. So come on up. <laughs> good morning. Happy Easter. Blessed Easter. Good morning. Woo, woo, good job on the dress. Good morning. Blessed Easter. Yeah, good morning. You got five? All right. All right, good morning. Oh, boy. We're full up today. I'm so excited. All right, good morning. Now, don't let me step on your toes or your fingers. Good morning. Good morning. Double. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am going to sneak through between the guys here so that I can see everyone. Now, I don't know how many people remember what this is. What is it? Right. We had to put away a word for all of Lent. And so we get to get it back out today on Easter Sunday. And what did we put it in? A box. box. What kind of a box? A toolbox. You bet. Because this particular word is a great tool to announce that Jesus is risen, right? Now, I told the folks that were here before, I told them that when we got this word back out, do you remember what the word looked like when we put it in? It was plain. It was kind of flat. It was kind of boring. Yeah, and I told you that it was going to be what? Transformed. Remember, what does transformed mean? Does it mean changed? The same thing, only really changed. Yeah, and you know... We've got a butterfly up there, right? Why do we have a butterfly on the cross? It's turning spring. It's Easter. And do you know how a butterfly starts out? Caterpillar. And then it goes in a cocoon and it's transformed, right? It's transformed. It's changed into a butterfly. That's why we use it for Easter. And so I told you that this thing in the box was going to be transformed. And do you remember what this thing was? What's the word? You can say it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And so I need to know what you think. Have they been transformed? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think so. Here, can you take one and pass it on? It kind of goes like this. All right. These ladies and gentlemen are the Alleluia megaphones, which we need for Easter. All right? All right. So anytime, all through the worship service, let's see, I hope I have enough. I thought I did. Anytime through the whole Easter service, oh, no. I'm so sorry. I'm missing two. Who can share? You can share with someone. Can you pass one back? Thank you. All right. So anytime through the whole Easter service, you can do this. You can say, what What does it say? Alleluia. Alleluia. Right? Anytime. Just put it up and practice. Practice right now. Yeah, all right. Any time through the whole Easter service. What do you say? Hallelujah. Yes. And especially when I say something like this. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. 
Right. And sometimes we say Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes. All right. You've got this. Thank you. So let's say a prayer right now. All right. And for anybody that's new to praying with me, we're going to repeat after me. All right. Dear Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. For dying on the cross and rising again to give us new life. Thank you for Alleluia. Amen. All right. You may go back to your seats. Thanks for coming up. All right. Oh, yeah. And use them all the way through worship. Oh yeah. You're welcome. You can you can keep it. All right, you're welcome. And now we prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude. Begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness, and you'll find that on page 94. Please stand if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves to the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. And in your mercy, grant us
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing our opening continues on page 138. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Oh my goodness, where are the megaphones? Oh, I'm so disappointed. Hallelujah. Okay, let's try it again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and be 
defend us, gracious Lord. we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. All right. reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who intones 
Psalm 118, as it tells you in the bulletin. reading from 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For all die in Adam. So all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at this coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and every power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed like an idle tale 
and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks, you old Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you for your deeds of power. We thank you that Jesus, crucified Jesus, has risen again, has conquered death, has forgiven our sins forevermore. Thank you for bringing us here to this house of worship that we may with one voice and one heart and one mind praise you and sing your alleluias. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. Amen. Why do you look for the living among the dead? The women had come to care for the body of Jesus early in the morning and bringing the spices. It was a solemn duty, but an important one. That would have been done before this day, but no work of any kind could be done from sundown on Friday until sunrise on Sunday, for it was the Sabbath, the day of rest. So the women come to the tomb, bringing the spices. But instead of finding the body of Jesus, two men in dazzling clothes suddenly appeared out of nowhere. And they asked the women, why do you look for the living among the dead? Can you imagine? Can you imagine how shocking this event would be? Yet when the men in dazzling clothes reminded them, then they remembered. The women were reminded and then they remembered. They were reminded and then they remembered. So they told the apostles. The women reminded the apostles also. But the apostles hadn't been there to see the empty tomb. The apostles hadn't been there to see the two men in dazzling clothes. And so they thought it was just an idle tale, and they did not believe the women. It seemed to them an idle tale until Peter went and saw for himself. And then he was amazed. And then he was amazed. You and I, we can't go to the empty tomb. We can't see the men in dazzling clothes. We never sat beside Jesus physically while he was on this earth. We never ate with Jesus or heard his words, not physically, while he was on this earth. How on earth will you and I be amazed? How on earth, all these centuries later, can you and I believe this? To some, all these centuries later, this seems an idle tale. You and I know people who don't believe. You and I know people who are still looking for the living among the dead. They search for happiness in new things or new experiences. They search for fulfillment in things and ways that cannot fulfill their hearts. They are searching for the living among the dead. 
And truthfully, we all do it at some point. If we're honest, there are times that we too wonder about idle tales. And so we come back to this house of worship or one like it. We keep coming back because if you're anything like me, you need to be reminded. I need to be reminded that even when the ambulance comes for me or we need a new job or whatever else has caused fear to overwhelm us, Jesus is with us. We need to be reminded that Jesus will never leave us. We need to be reminded that Jesus loves us so much. We need never fear. And sometimes I need that reminder. I need that story in the short version. I need that story in the short version. Christ has risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yes. Because this is the promise for my eternal life. This is the promise for my life every day. This is the promise for your life and your eternal life and your life every day. And sometimes we need to hear it loud, like megaphone loud. Christ is risen. Hallelujah! Yes. Yes. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! The truth is, we need this reminder as often as possible, as loud as possible. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! We know. We remember. Yes? We don't have to go looking for the living among the dead because we know. We know that Christ is risen He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen.
now turn to page 104 and confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand if you are able. We believe... On this most holy day, let us pray to God for the church, the world, and all that it are in need, that the whole world may know the resurrection that God promises to give. O God of life, pour the life of your Son's resurrection into the churches. Make visible the unity we have in you. Show to each denomination the strengths of the others. Hear us, O God. Give to the lands and seas the life of your continuing creation. Water the flowers of springtime and nurture the growing crops. Bless all who protect your plants and animals. Hear us, O God. Grant to all nations your life of peace. Keep us from war. Lead us into justice. Turn enemies into friends. Hear us, O God. Visit the needy with your compassionate life. Feed the hungry. Nurse the sick. Protect the weak. Comfort the sorrowful. Attend the dying. We pray especially for those in our, on our prayer list and for the family of Alice Grant and the family of the Brody children. Hear us, O oh God. Raise up this assembly with the life of your spirit. Reveal in our community the signs of Christ's resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God of life, we praise you for the faithful who have met you in death. Bring us all through death into the life of your resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, we praise your life. We bless your mercy. We honor your power. Transform all that is dying with the joy of the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, through whom we are bold to pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please exchange that peace with one another.
Noisy offering Sunday. Where are my helpers? And we don't have quite enough buckets. So who wants a bowl? <laughs> Not everybody. There's one more over here. Where we go? All right. All right. Go with the bowl? All right. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. 
cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. You we praise and glorify. You we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites that, and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love, and fold us in your arms, all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing until needy no longer and bound to you in love. We feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours. O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And make us bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
You may be seated until the usher comes for you. And I'd like to remind you that all who believe that Jesus is truly present in this meal is welcome at our table. Also, in the very center ring is grape juice for those who need it. All is ready.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. A word to my young helpers. I will need you in the back of the church at the end of the last hymn we're about to sing, okay? Are you up for it? Yeah. Great. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Wilson. So let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. And thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you all. I take five. <laughs>